Tinubu, Remy, and Ababio, Mocking Nigeria's Hardship by Farouk Berogi. Now to the news in full. President Bola Hamed Tinubu, aptly nicknamed T Pain, recently stated from London that Nigerians would, in the future, appreciate the wisdom of his reforms. Such a statement is both callous and mendacious. It is callous because these reforms are literally destroying the livelihoods of millions and causing the deaths of many. What possible benefits could the disease derive from economic reforms that precipitated their untimely demise? Exactly, people are dying from hunger. So what will your reform do for them in their grave? Nothing. They are dead and gone and forgotten. So suffering will that is leading to death, what reform are you trying to, to bring that is causing people to die? They can't afford to eat, they can't afford to live, they can't afford to pay hospital bills, and eventually they get to die. So what is your reform going to do for them? It is mendacious because, as evidenced by the history of structural adjustment programs, SAP, in Nigeria, and the experiences of other nations implementing similar neoliberal economic reforms, such policies invariably erode the middle class, excavate poverty among the lower classes, yet please the market, thereby benefiting the upper classes. Almost without exception, neoliberal policies such as the elimination of subsidies, deregulation, reduction in social spending and fiscal austerity, excavate economic inequality, and hinder sustainable development in developing economies. These policies often benefit large corporations and the wealthy, which creates an inequitable concentration of wealth in the hands of a few and widens the chasm between the rich and the poor. Thus, the deferred benefits for which Nobu wants Nigeria to endure mass debt and hopelessness at the opening of Nigerian markets to international competition which may please global markets but will overwhelm local businesses, lacking the resources and technology to, com to compete, and the freeing up of resources to invest in infrastructure. However, the reality is that contemporary Nigeria is inhospitable to foreign investment due to the absence of security, social and physical infrastructure, and because Tinubu policies have so impoverished the majority that they cannot afford to purchase what foreign businesses produce. This explains the mass exodus of foreign companies since 2023. Yes, because people can no longer afford them. That is why most of these foreign countries are leaving Nigeria because they can no longer withstand the economic situation of the country. People are not buying. And then the situation of the country is, is getting worse to maintain their markets, to, to, to generate electricity. Fuel is expensive. Everything is expensive. So... To do a business is really hard before you pay your rent, before you do this, before you do that. That is why most of these foreign companies left. Furthermore, given the culture of endemic corruption entrenched within the upper echelons of power, most of the funds saved from subsidy withdrawals, tariff increases, intensified transaction, and cuts in social programs will likely be misappropriated. The government will still resort to borrowing from the World Bank and the IMF to finance its operation. We are already witnessing the phenomenon despite massive inflow of cash into government coffers. No new projects are being constructed or even initiated. In fact, governments at all levels are procrastinating over implementation, implementing the 70,000 Naira per month minimum wage, exactly. State governors convert the excess funds they receive from federal allocation into dollars and stash them away, thereby putting pressure on the Naira. Now, the vast majority of Nigerians have resigned themselves to the fact that death, starvation, and hopelessness are the only certain outcome of Tinobu's reforms and are seeking a way out. Middle class citizens are saving up to leave the country, and for the first time ever, even the majority of northern Nigerian middle class is investing in plans to escape from Nigeria. In response, Senate President Godzilla Ababio declared that Nigerians fleeing the blazing neoliberal hell that Tinubu has created are ungrateful and unpatriotic cowards. Who should be stopped? I believe people should place love for their country above financial gains. 
That is why many of us chose to remain here, he said. If we remain here, does that, are your children here? What are you saying that they should be stopped? Are your children living in Nigeria? Are your children experiencing the sufferings that people are experiencing in Nigeria? Just be cared for nothing. Be cared to people of cities. Meanwhile, your own families are enjoying. They should be stopped. Why should they be stopped? If they have the money to travel out, let them go. Why do you want to stop them if you are not a devil's incarnate? Babu and his ill choose to stay in Nigeria, not out of love for the country, yes, but because they thrive off it and are insulated from the harm, they inflict upon it, yes, they are not, they are not a party to what the, whatsoever the Nigerians are going through. What is their business with fuel? They don't, they don't understand that fuel is expensive. They don't enter public transport. They are enjoying, they eat what they like, they, they, they sleep in, in luxurious apartments. So you are saying that we should we should remain here because we love our country. If you love the country, you will make sure that the country is working. And not just siphon all the money into your own account for your financial gains. The professionals living in Nigeria in jails are not doing so because they lack love for their country. They love their country. They simply harbor the raging neoliberal inferno. It has become, it is insulting to it suggests, as Ababu did, that Nigerian immigrants are motivated by base and unpatriotic motives. Even more insulting is Ababu's proposed solution to halt immigration that dissatisfied Nigerians should reduce the number of cars they own. At times, one wonders whether Ababu retains any functioning brain cells. That is a very valid question. It seems like he doesn't have any functioning brain. His, his brain is something is wrong with it because the way he thinks, he thinks like an alien. Like an alien, that is the way he thinks. Meanwhile, Remy Sinobu, Bola Sinobu's wife, continues this pattern of insulting Nigeria and amidst their suffering. On Thursday, she told the only of that her husband is not responsible for Nigeria's current travel, which contradicts her husband's own acceptance of responsibility for the hardship Nigeria are enduring with the promise of an illogical better tomorrow as compensation for the pain he is inflicting. Now, Tinobu's neoliberal policies are eradicating the middle class and plunging the poor into deeper, more excruciating poverty, reminiscent of the day of military dictatorship. I wonder how much longer this can continue, yet we will be observing from afar, as nothing that is happening now comes as a shock. I for one this, that this would occur even before Tinobu assumed power. Everybody also foresaw this. Everybody knew that this man was going to be a disaster. And still yet, he rigged his way in just because he wants to be the president. And now people are suffering. And yet, they are still mocking us, trying to say that people that have the opportunity to run away should not run away. They are just wicked. Wicked. My listeners, over to you. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Do not forget to like, to share, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening. See you some other time. Bye.